Hi guys. Welcome to another tutorial of this course. In the previous video, we have created three obstacles. But, we have not used them yet. So, how do we use them? We want those obstacles to spawn in front of the player randomly. So, we need to create a script first. I am going to create one called Obstacle Spawner. Now, we can open the script. First of all, we need the access of the three obstacles inside this script. So, we will create three game object type variables. It is public because we have to access it from inspector window. First one is obstacle one, no space here, variable name cannot have space. The second and third variable is going to be obstacle 2 and obstacle 3. Now, we are going to need a private flow type variable called obstacle spawn interval, since we want there will be an interval between spawning two obstacles. Like when the first obstacle will spawn it will wait for 2 to 3 seconds, and then spawn another obstacle. So, I am going to give a value like 2.5f for this variable. Now, we will create a function called spawn obstacle. Inside this function, we will write code for spawning obstacles. We want those obstacle will be spawning randomly. So we need to generate random number. I am going to create an integer type variable called random. Now inside this variable, we will put the generated random number. So, I am going to generate random number right here. The range is going to be 1 and 4. So, it will now generate a random number between 1, 2, or 3. Now, we will do some if condition. The first condition is going to be if the random number is equal to 1, then we will spawn the obstacle 1. So. In order to spawn an obstacle we need to write instantiate. Now we have to pass some parameters. The first parameter will be the game object that we want to spawn, here we want to spawn obstacle 1 game object. The next parameter is going to be the position where we want the obstacle 1 to be spawned. Now, I am going to open the Unity editor to show you where we actually want to spawn the obstacle. Inside the hierarchy, we can see a game object called ground spawner. We have created this game object earlier for spawning grounds. And we will use the exposition of this game object for spawning obstacles. Because, if we spawn an obstacle at this position, then obstacle will be automatically placed on the ground. So, how we can get the exposition of this game object inside the script? Okay. Currently we know the obstacle spawner script is not attached to any game object. The script will not work if it is not attached to a game object. So, if I attach the script to the ground spawner game object. Then we can easily get the exposition of this game object. So, I am going to attach the script. Now, there is a problem, what would be the Y position for spawning obstacle, since all grounds don't spawn at the same Y position. What if the next ground spawns at the top position, then the obstacle will keep falling down as it will not find any ground underneath. So, in order to prevent that, I am going to see where the toppest ground spawns. Now, I will play the game. I am going to wait until the ground 3 spawns. Okay, we can see the ground 3 spawned at this Y position which is minus 1.04. It means I have to use a value longer than minus 
Now, I think the perfect value should be like minus 0.5. So, the obstacle will be spawned above the topest ground, and then it will fall down to the ground. So, I am going to go back to the Visual Studio. And then as we will pass x, y, and z value separately, so we have to write new vector 3 then we will write the x position. As currently the script is attached to the ground spawner game object, so if we write transform.position.x, then we get the x position of the ground spawner game object. Now, we will write the y position which would be minus 0.5f. And then we can write 0 for the z position. Now, we have to pass one more parameter which is rotation. Here we can write quaternion.identity. It will not make any change for the rotation. If the game object is already rotated, then that rotation will be applied, otherwise nothing will happen. So now, we will write another if condition for the obstacle too. Here we can just write else. And then we can copy the first if condition and paste it here. Now, I am going to change those value. If the random number is 2, then the obstacle 2 will be spawned. Now, we can copy this condition for the obstacle 3. And then change those values from 2 to 3. Now, we need to call the spun obstacle function as we already know that a function must be called from an event if we want the function to work. But, since we want to call this function repeatedly after every 2.5 seconds, so we are going to need a timer, and we will create another function where we will call the spun obstacle function with the timer. In this case, Unity has a special function called iEnumerator. I am going to create one and name the function spun obstacles. Make sure the function name is not similar to an existing function. Now, since we want to call the function again and again, so we need a loop. Loop means something that repeats forever. There are multiple types of loop. But, we need while loop here. So, I am going to type while, and then we can give a condition. But, as we want the function to be looping forever unconditionally, so we don't need any condition but we cannot leave it empty. So, we can write true, as true doesn't mean negative. Now, we will call the spawn obstacle function. After that, we will set up a timer here. So, I am going to type yield return new and then wait for seconds. Now, here we will pass the obstacle spawn interval variable. This line will keep the function wait for 2.5 seconds. So, now this loop will first call the spawn obstacles function, then after every 2.5 seconds it will get called again and again. Now, inside of the start function, we have to call the iEnumerator function. We have to call the iEnumerator function in a different way. First, we will type start coroutine. And then inside a double quotes, we will write the function name which is spawn obstacles or we can copy and paste the function name inside the double quotes now we can save the script by pressing control s and then open unity editor now we will attach the three obstacles to the script so, I am going to open the prefabs folder and then we will drag and drop one by one. Now, I am going to play the game. We can see the crate is not falling down, 
maybe we forgot to add rigid body component to the crate game object, no problem we can add rigid body at any time. So, I am going to stop the game. Then double click on the crate prefab. Yes, we cannot see the rigid body, as I said, I forgot to add the rigid body 2D component. However, now we will add the rigid body 2D component. After adding the rigid body, I am going to play the game again. Now, we can see the crate is falling down perfectly. But, we can also see the obstacles are falling down really slowly, so we can see the falling scene in the game view window. We want the obstacle will be fallen down before the camera come. So, we have to increase the obstacle falling speed. So, inside the prefabs folder, we will double click to open the cactus one prefab. We can see the rigid body component which makes the object fall down. Here we can see gravity scale value is 1. If we make the gravity scale 0, then the object will not fall down at all. But, if we increase the gravity scale to 5, it will increase the fall down speed by 5x. So, the obstacle will fall down really quickly. Now, we will increase the gravity to 5 for the obstacle 2 prefab. Then we will do the same for the crate prefab. Now, we will do one more thing, we will move the ground a little at the right side. Then as we've moved the ground, so we will move the ground spawner game object at the right side as well. Now, we also need to move the player. Ok, this looks perfect. So, now, we will play the game again to see if it's working correctly. Ok, it's working as expected, the obstacles fall down so quickly that we cannot see the falling inside the game view window. So this is it for this video and I will see you in the next tutorial.